This herd is eating hay that has top food value. The only supplement necessary is salt. You know, it's not difficult to grow a hay crop with all the vitamins, proteins, and carotene to give it high food value. But in many cases, by the time the hay is baled, it has lost a great deal of its food value. To preserve the high quality of the hay you grow, you want to bale as many of the leaves as possible because practically all the nourishment of a legume is contained in the leaves, very little in the stems. If you lose a large percentage of leaves between mowing and baling, as much as 240 pounds of protein supplement per ton must be added to restore the food value to the level the crop had before it was cut. The annoying fact about hay is that the leaves dry faster than the stems. When the leaves are ready for baling, the stems still contain too much moisture. When the stems are ready for baling, the leaves are crumbling. So your big problem is to speed up the drying of the stems so they will be ready for baling as soon as the leaves are dried. To put up high quality hay, all steps in the haying operation must be performed properly. First, leading authorities now state that the right time to mow is just barely before the crop begins to bloom. In this stage, the hay is tender and succulent. It has full carotene content and is packed with nourishment that livestock need. From this stage on, the crop grows in bulk but its food value increases very little. Second, plan to mow only as much hay as you can bale in half a day. Start mowing immediately after the dew dries off in the morning, when the standing crop is rid of most of its moisture. Third, condition your hay immediately after mowing, when the hay is fresh and easy to pick up. True hay conditioning consists of cracking the stem its full length, compacting all the pith cells of the stem without compacting the pith cells of the leaves or chopping off the leaves. Fourth, when necessary, roll the windrow over with a rake the next morning while the hay is a little bit tough before the leaves are ready to shatter. Fifth, bale as soon after raking as your hay is ready. If your crop is light and if the weather is right for drying, you can mow and condition your hay in the morning and bale late the same afternoon without any raking at all. To handle your haying operations most efficiently, you can mow and condition at the same time. Then the stems dry as fast as the leaves, and so you have practically no leaf loss. As a result, you bale when your hay has top food value. Now, you have the finest hay to feed your livestock. In addition, this system of cutting, conditioning, and curing saves valuable time. You save time by doing the two operations in one trip through the field, also reducing fuel and labor costs. You save time because you cut drying time in half. This double speed up in hay harvesting gives you the best chance to beat the weather. According to U.S. Department of Agriculture reports, the chances are 41 out of 100 that it will rain over any given three-day period during the haying season, except in arid areas. If you can complete your haying operations in two days, you are much less likely to be bothered by rain. The chances are only 19 out of 100. When you can handle all your haying operations in one day, of course, rain just about ceases to be a problem. You can pick a day when weather conditions are just right. Now, to see exactly how McCormick hay conditioners operate and how they solve the problems that arise in conditioning of hay, please flip the record. To pick up the windrowed hay aggressively without compacting the pith cells of the leaves, the number 2A has tire carcass rolls with spiral grooves. No special pickup attachment is required. This type of pickup eliminates the necessity for running the machine too close to the ground. In fact, the proper operating height for best conditioning 
is at the highest position that the machine will pick up material. Operating at this height, you save fuel and avoid overloading the drive. You have complete hydraulic control or a hand ratchet for setting the operating height to get heavy materials through the rolls most efficiently. The hydraulic control is also a great aid in avoiding the larger field obstructions. Small rocks are seldom a problem because they are kicked ahead of the rolls and left at the end of the windrow. Hay that is bunched presents little problem for the McCormick number 2A because of the high speed of the rolls. To string out the hay into a more even pattern so that each stem can be conditioned, the lower roller turns at high speed. 1950 RPM. The high speed rolls actually thin out the hay as it passes through the conditioner and so there always appears to be less hay in the rolls than on the ground directly in front of the rolls. After the crop is picked up, the number 2A does the most efficient job of truly conditioning the hay. The number 2A cracks the stem its full length. It compacts all the pith cells of the stem without bruising the leaves and without chopping the leaves off the stem. When the stem is cracked this way, it will dry in wet areas 50% faster, speeding up your haying operation so you can beat the weather. In dry areas where rain is no threat, cracking the stem speeds up their drying so that the moment the leaves are ready for baling, the stems are dry too. Conditioning grasses such as coastal Bermuda, Pangola, Brome, and Timothy speeds up drying from three or four days to one or at most two days. Equally important as conditioning is proper placement of the material back on the ground. The high speed rolls of the number 2A move the hay at a high rate of speed and then the windrow and deflector sheets guide the conditioned hay into a pattern that places the leaves inside and turns the stems up into the air. This careful placement of conditioned hay forms a fluffy windrow through which maximum air can circulate for rapid, even drying. Now, let's discuss the efficient use and proper care of your machine. To prevent bruising the leaves of a legume by overcrushing the hay, use minimum roll spring pressure under most conditions. For special conditions requiring increased pressure, refer to your operator's manual. Plugging the machine is a time waster that usually can be avoided. Drive carefully to follow the windrow and prevent the hay conditioner from overlapping into the next swath. Hitching with the tongue level to preserve the proper pickup angle at the lower rolls and running the machine as high as possible will greatly aid in getting heavy material through the rolls. When the machine is raised, the rolls open. Adjusting the belt tightener so that the spring coils just separate while the rolls are open will put enough tension on the belt to allow the rolls to clear themselves of plugs or wrapping in most cases. If the rolls do not clear themselves quickly and easily, remove the material by hand. Otherwise, you may damage the drive belt by overheating. Ground travel speed is no problem. You can condition at whatever speed you can mow. Make sure that your PTO speed is 540 RPM. The PTO sliding shaft telescopes as it carries the power from the tractor to the hay conditioner. The shaft should be lubricated periodically so that it never binds. Proper lubrication will help prevent costly knuckle failures. When you store your machine, be sure to lock it in transport position to keep the rolls from taking a permanent set. Collapse the cylinder to keep the piston from rusting in the open air. Take off the drive belt and wrap it in paper or burlap to keep it from taking a permanent set. By following these suggestions, you can bale hay that has top food value. You can do the job in minimum time and your hay conditioner will give you years of efficient performance. Remember the five suggestions for handling your hay. One. Mow just barely before your crop blooms. Two, mow only as much as you can bale in half a day. Three, condition your hay immediately after mowing. Four, when necessary, roll the windrow over with a rake the following morning while the hay is still a little tough. Five, 
Bale as soon after raking as your hay is ready. By following these suggestions, your hay cures evenly, both stems and leaves, and you have practically no leaf loss. You put up hay that has top food value. The only supplement you'll need is salt. And you'll complete the job fast with a real saving in time, fuel, and labor expense when the weather is just right for haying.